Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, June the 25th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, let me just say, uh, the heavyweight division right now is asserting a lot of supremacy in the sport. I understand you got big fights coming up. The Demetrius Andrade fight is a huge fight at middleweight. The Amer Khan fight is actually a meaningful fight, at least to me. Right? The Anthony Yard fight at light heavy is an interesting fight. But right now, the heavyweight division is king. Right? On the horizon are some fascinating fights. You have Joe Joyce unbeaten making his case going up against Bryant Jennings you have unbeaten Daniel Du Bois versus unbeaten Nathan Gorman in a fight I'm surprised is taking place right two young lions who are unbeaten why feed one to the other you have David Allen very hard puncher on the rise against David Price very hard puncher this fight will tell us if he's on the rise, going horizontal, or going down. You also have Derek Chisora against Arthur Spielka. And finally, you have Dylan White against Oscar Rivas. Well, this video is on another heavyweight fight that I find fascinating. It's Sam Peter. A guy who, in a fight in 2005, knocked down Vladimir Klitschko three times and lost the fight. Right? You have Sam Peter trying to come back after missing 2017 and 2018. And whose last fight was against a guy with two wins, 12 losses, and two draws. Right? Peter is taking on... Yui Fury, a guy who, in my opinion, has performance anxiety. Let's talk about it some more. You know, the key fight for me regarding Sam Peter is not his fight against Vladimir Klitschko, it's his fight against Vitaly Klitschko. Understand, Vitaly keeps him at the end of a jab. You actually notice in that fight that Sam Peter can't move. Right? Big puncher. No question about that. Always has a puncher's chance. No question about it. But he moves too slowly. If you can keep him at the end of a jab, stick and move. Not get pinned up against the ropes. Not give him an opportunity to build up some steam in tracking you down right if you can have the fight be a stop and start fight where this guy is just running into your jab Sam Peter has no answers right has no answers so understand this is the perfect opponent the perfect opponent for Yui Fury the perfect opponent. Let me say this to Vladimir Klitschko, and I say this to the AJ crowd. Vladimir Klitschko, after getting dropped by Sam Peter three times in a fight in 2005, does fight Peter again. Five years later. Right? Five years later. And of course, in that fight, he ends up KOing Sam Peter. Right? In 2010. Vladimir Klitschko, who held all the cards from a box office standpoint earlier, understood he couldn't fight Peter again right away because he needed to figure out exactly why he got dropped three times by this slow-footed fighter. Right, so he didn't jump back into the ring with him. He waited a while. I'm surprised AJ's jumping back into the water with Andy Ruiz. Now let's talk about Yui Fury. Right? Mr. Performance Anxiety. 
right? If I were the manufacturer of uh, things like Cialis, I would consider having Huey Fury as a spokesman. In other words, when, the, when it's time for the event, this guy has a problem delivering. Talented guy, great legs, he's fighting for the heavyweight title in his backyard against Joseph Parker, right, who's a long way from home, right, Parker's in the UK from New Zealand. Here's Huey Fury with, you know, at least a jab and legs to stick and move. Now let me just say, I believe fighters who don't have performance anxiety, fighters who understand that they're stick and movers, they're stylists, they're not in there to knock out the other guy, they're not even in there to hurt the other guy, they're in there to outpoint the other guy. If you're a slick fighter looking to outpoint the other guy, looking to outstyle the other guy, then you need to know how to steal rounds, don't you? You're fighting in your backyard, shouldn't you at least know how to connect to the fans? So, you have some fighters. I'll name a great one, who I always name, Ray Leonard. Right? You have some fighters who understood. Right? If they're in a close round with an opponent, and they're, you know, looking slick, looking cute, right, moving around the ring and stuff like that. They understood that they had to let their hands go late in the round. Throw some flurries. It's a close round. Make it look like it's your round. Make it look like you're the boss when the bell rings at the end of the round. Right, have some moves that look good to the crowd that might not even matter to the other fighter. Right, shuffle your feet. You know, throw some bolo punches. You know, move your body in a way where even though you're not throwing punches, you look like you're in charge. Boxing's a sport with judges, right? It's like figure skating. You got to impress the judges. One way to do that is by getting the crowd involved. After all, how many friends in the crowd does Joseph Parker from New Zealand have? You're the guy who's supposed to have your boys in the crowd. With Huey Fury, he's fighting Joseph Parker. Competitive fight. It could have been scored for Fury. But that's the problem. Fury leaves it on the table. He doesn't throw enough punches. It felt like a deflating balloon. Right? The fans show up to see the local guy win the heavyweight title. And then the local guy doesn't throw a lot of punches. You're seeing a round that's close with 30 seconds left. Local guy doesn't even try to steal the round. Right? He's not flurrying and moving away from Joseph Parker, waving at Joseph Parker, doing whatever guys need to do to look like they're in control. Right? He doesn't push it into that extra gear. So, of course, he loses to Joseph Parker. He's devastated. He thought he was well ahead on the scorecards. In other words, this is the guy who can't read the room. You're watching the telecast and you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, this is a close fight. Somebody here in the last three rounds is going to have to make a statement to get the heavyweight title. And then you're noticing a lack of urgency from Yui Fury. So he fights Kubrat Pulev. Now let's be clear about this fight. Kubrat Pulev had been out of the ring for a year and a half. Right? You're fighting the rusty version of Kubrat Pulev. Let's be clear, too, on where the guys are in their careers. Fury's in his mid-twenties. Pulev is in his late thirties. Right? I mean, you're supposed to be the young lion with the bite. You're supposed to be the hungry lion. Pulev is supposed to be the old vet who has been on the world stage, right? Has been here before, might have lost the hunger, right? Has moved out of the hood into the suburbs, you know, stuff like that. You're supposed to be the young guy making the statement, making the arrival. 
Not only that, the fight's in Pulev's backyard. So you would have thought Fury shows up. Fury would, you know, Fury should have been thinking, man, how did I lose that Joseph Parker fight? The title was on the table for me. So he should have shown up in Pulev's backyard, and he should have thought, you know what, I'm going to take the crowd out of this. Not only that, let's be real here. Pulev has a great jab. I'm not here to say different. But you know between the two guys, right, Fury has the mobile jab. Fury has the legs. So you would have thought Fury would have been dancing around, popping a jab, not letting Pulev land his jab. Not only that, come on. You've seen fights where a guy loses an arm. I remember I saw an Eddie Chambers fight. I forget who he was fighting. Might have been Tomas Ademic, I'm not sure. Where you knew the guy had pulled a muscle in his arm. And there was Eddie Chambers with the other hand. Right? Still in the fight. Boxing folklore has it that Carmine Bastillo, after a fight, was asked about um, his closed eye. He said, hey, that didn't matter because I had a good eye. Right? That, that's the boxing mentality. Right? You lose an arm, you keep fighting. You, you have the other arm. One eye is closed. You know what? I can still see the guy with the other eye. Right? Ref, please, don't stop the fight. Well, here is Yui Fury fighting a guy he should be able to dance around. Right? I thought Fury had a great shot on Kubrat Pulev. Right? Great shot on him. Early in the fight, Fury gets a cut eyelid. Now, it's a serious injury. I'm not here to say different. Right? But let's just say everything then fell apart for him after that. You got the feeling that this guy needs a sunny day to operate. Hey, Google. Off. This guy needs a sunny day to operate. Right? This guy, when the fight gets muddy, when guys, you know, run at him and stuff like that, when he, you know, splits a fingernail or something like that, he gets thrown off his game. Right? He's, he's not his brother who, you know, gets dropped by Deontay Wilder in the ninth round. Doesn't panic does not panic. I would argue he goes out and wins the 10th round and wins the 11th round. Hell, when he gets off the canvas in the 9th round, I thought Tyson Fury looks good. Then we get to the 12th round. Right? Disaster strikes. Fury gets dropped, has the heavyweight title. Just less than 3 minutes away. Gets dropped. Gets back up. Has a clear head at least pretends to have a clear head, makes it to the end of the fight. Now, Yui Fury, let's just say, he had two career opportunities, right? The Parker title fight. The Kubat Pulev after Pulev is off a year and a half fight. And he just was not ready. Right? Just was not ready. So, this is a winnable fight here, right? Very important fight. Saudi Arabia, the fight's going to be in Saudi Arabia. Uh, boxing's a sport looking for fans, right? This could be a great venue for the sport going forward. Right? A lot of boxing fans, big money, modern venues... This is a showcase fight. Now you're fighting a guy who didn't fight in 2017. Didn't fight in 2018. Recently lost a fight. His last fight was against a guy with two wins. 
The guy can't move. You have the better legs. You have a jab. The guy got bludgeoned. Bludgeoned. By Vitaly Klitschko's jab. You have film that you can sit down and look at and say, wow, the jab's really effective against him. Not only that, you don't have to guess about Sam Peters' you know, strengths. He's a heavy-handed guy. So you're going to think to yourself, okay, I have to box. I can't trade. This is a boxing match, not a fight. Right? You also know. In some other fights, I've been criticized for not throwing enough, right? There's some rounds of that Kubrat Pulev fight where it looks like Fury has just forgotten he has to throw punches. Right? The judges who he thought were impressed by his performance against Joseph Parker, and he did give a good performance. If you're into pivoting and footwork and stuff like that, that's a footwork festival. But the judges understood he didn't throw enough punches. So if you're Fury, you're thinking, okay, I got a flurry. Let's hope in camp he's working on just flurries. Maybe the flurry doesn't even hurt his opponent. But you're trying to win rounds with the judges, aren't you? Let's hope his game plan is not to go deep in the pocket on Sam Peter and trade shots and try to knock Sam out. He should be thinking, hey, I'm going to have the scoring come to me, the fight come to me. I'm going to do what I need to to win rounds. If a knockout comes, great. If I catch Sam with some stiff jab or a left hook off the jab and he staggered, okay, maybe I'd think about ending it then. But that's not my plan A. Right? This fight is here for Fury to showcase. I like Fury to win. Hedged with Peter by KO. Right? Peter, to me, doesn't have enough boxing skills, at least he shouldn't have enough boxing skills, to be competitive on the scorecard against Fury if the fight goes a distance and Fury doesn't get dropped multiple times. Right? So Fury, Peter's a former heavyweight champion, folks. Right? Fury has an opportunity here. To remind us that he's an elite fighter. Let's see if he takes it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also say too. The odds for this fight haven't posted yet. On oddschecker.com. Which now has a U.S. subsite. If it posts, and if Fury is too big of a favorite, right? If Fury is going off at, let's say, a minus 600 or a minus 700, then my advice would be to stay on the sidelines, right? If it's reasonably priced, and Fury is, let's say, a minus 400 or something like that, that's when I would leap into the water, right? If you're just going to speculate on this fight, if it's just a, you know what, lottery ticket fight, you're going to bet a dollar and hope to make a lot of money, then it's the bet to make would just be Sam Peter by KO. Not that I think Peter gets the KO, but Fury's been so underwhelming under the spotlight in big fights that there is a possibility that Sam lands on the guy. Right? Most likely outcome, I think Fury wins the fight. He should win the fight. I'll hedge the play if the odds allow with Peter by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.